This video will help you understand how to write equations for both physical and chemical changes. And this section of the uh, packet you have entitled Properties of Matter would be the very end, so questions 25 through 28. All right, in this first example, it says that nitrogen undergoes evaporation. Nitrogen is a diatomic element. So how should it be written? Well, if it's diatomic, it should be written as N2. And since the word evaporation is referring to a phase change, that's a physical change because the chemical identity of the substance is unchanged, we would still have the same formula N2 on the right. And it's a physical change. The word evaporation is the change from a liquid to a gas. So we put in the phases of matter, liquid on the left and gas on the right. In our next example, it says that water undergoes electrolysis. So the diagram from your packet for electrolysis looks like this. There's liquid water in the beaker and when electricity runs through that particular sample of water, it produces both oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. So the products of the reaction are O2 and H2. Let's go ahead and write that particular equation. So starting with liquid water on the left, and then we have O2 and H2 on the right. Now we need to balance the equation so that we have the same number of each type of atom on both sides. Since there are two oxygens on the right, we need two oxygens on the left. So we put a coefficient of two in front of the water. Now that multiplies the entire formula by two. We have now four hydrogens on the left, so we can put a two on the other side. Now we have four hydrogens on the right. The equation is balanced, and again, this is a chemical change because the chemical identity of the water is being changed. So for the next example, number 26, we are given that carbon dioxide undergoes sublimation. So the formula for carbon dioxide is CO2. And sublimation is an example of a phase change. This is classified as a physical change. So the chemical identity of the carbon dioxide is unchanged. We still have CO2 on the right. And again, this is a physical change. The word sublimation is the change from a solid to a gas, so we fill in the phases of matter, solid on the left and gas on the right. Now we come to our next example where it says methane gas. The formula for methane gas is CH4, and so the phase of matter is G for gas. It reacts with oxygen gas. Oxygen is a diatomic element, so the formula is O2, it's also a gas to produce carbon dioxide gas, CO2, and water vapor. So all of these are in the phase of matter gas. This is a chemical change because the chemical identity is changing from the left to the right. All we have to do now is balance the equation. We have four hydrogens on the left. So we're gonna put a two in front of the water. So we have four hydrogens on the right now but that multiplies the water by two, we have a total of four oxygens all together on the right side of the equation. So putting a two in front of the O2, now we have four oxygens on the left. The equation is balanced. Here is the next pair of examples. The first one here says hydrogen gas. So hydrogen is a diatomic element. We write this as H2 and the phase of matter is G for gas. It reacts with iodine vapor. Iodine is also a diatomic element, so it is written as I2, and the word vapor means it's in the gaseous phase. And it produces gaseous hydrogen iodide. So the formula for hydrogen iodide is HI, and it's also a gas. This is a chemical change because we are changing the chemical identity of the substances. And to balance this equation, 
All we need is to put a 2 in front of the HI on the right. Now we come to ammonia undergoing condensation. The formula for ammonia is NH3. Condensation is a phase change. It is a physical change, so we still have NH3 on the right. Again, it's a physical change. Condensation is the change from a gas to a liquid. So a gas to a liquid. And with our last example here, we have solid iron reacting with liquid bromine to produce solid iron bromide. So iron is not a diatomic element. It is simply written as Fe. It is a solid. Bromine is a diatomic element. So we write this as Br2 and it is a liquid. The product is this iron bromide compound written as FeBr3 and it is in the solid phase. It is a chemical change because we are changing the chemical identity of the substances. To balance the equation, we need to put coefficients in front of the Br2. So we have now six bromines on the left. And then to get six bromines on the right, we put a two on the other side. The bromines are now balanced. We have two irons on the right. So we'll finally put a two in front of the Fe and the equation is balanced. Our last example is that iodine, which is written as I2, is undergoing deposition. That is a phase change. So we still have I2 on the right. It is a physical change. And the word deposition is the change from a gas to a solid. So gas on the left, solid on the right. All right, well these eight examples, four of them being physical changes and four of them being chemical changes, hopefully helps you understand the process of writing equations for both physical and chemical changes. Thanks for watching.